In this video, I want to show you how you can use a technique called query folding to make your reports load faster. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fenan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So query folding is a technique where you pass the workload of the data transformations that you normally do in Power BI instead to your source. And it's best practice to do so because it gives Power BI less work to do which means data loads faster and that workload can potentially be done faster because your sources typically have more resources to work with. So let's go through an example that I prepared for you today. So here we have a query folding Power BI report that I prepared, which just has order details as an output. So all it has is some order details, contact names, and some details like counting the number of orders per contact, and also the order amounts for uh, each of those. And if we go to the Power Query here, the query folding you will normally find in the Power Query window here. And this is where you'll be able to monitor, uh, you know, if you're doing query folding or not. And in here we have two queries. So one of them uh, is the order details table, which is coming from a SQL database. Um, and this is where we do the bulk of our transformations on the right hand side. And you'll see we also have another query here, customers, which uh, is di disabled and is, we're only using it for transformations here in Power Query. And you'll see it has a lot of information about customers, um, but what's important is that it's not coming from SQL, so it's coming from actually a pasted data that I pasted here, but it could be coming from an Excel, but essentially coming from a different source than the SQL source. So essentially what we're doing in the Power Query here is we're essentially uh, just getting the columns that we want from the order details table and basically merging it with the customers table so we can get the customer names, contact names from the customers table here. And this is the final product that we want from the query, which is the count of orders, total orders amount, contact name, uh, things like this. Now, what's great about query folding is that you might already be doing it without even knowing it. So, what, I'm, what do I mean by that? So, let's see, let's go a couple of steps up here. So, we pull the data from the order details table in SQL, we remove other columns, so basically we remove all the other columns that we don't want, and then we expand some more stuff that we, we wanted to get from the SQL database, right? So we've got some other stuff here. Now you notice these steps, uh, there are four different steps that we just went through. But what you'll notice if I right click on any of these steps is you have the option view native query. And having this enabled, uh, that you can click on it, means that that step is being query folded. So that means you are passing the transformations that you are doing here back to the source. So the act of removing other columns, even though it looks like it's a step here in Power BI, is actually abstracted to you. All what Power BI is doing on the back is just creating a SQL query that it passes it to the source itself. So the source will do the transformation that you want and all it does is it just sends you back the uh, uh, the result of that query and to see what that query is you just click the view native query so if we uh, click here you see that this is the select statement that it sends to the SQL database to say give me these uh, columns and just these columns right so you didn't have to do anything um, Power BI just did it for you so you didn't have to write this and you didn't have to know that it existed all you know is that it's a step here in Power Query uh, and that's it but the good thing is that it's already implementing query folding without you knowing that it exists. So one thing to bear in mind with query folding is that it only works when your source supports query folding. So um, query type databases, uh, I believe, are supported. So SQL uh, is one of the sources that are supported and actually it's the only source that I've ever used query folding on. But I'm sure there are other uh, database systems that support uh, queries and, and they would be supported with query folding. But let's say, for example, if we go to the customers table here, 
and you look at the uh, steps here so there's only two steps so source which is getting it from the binary text data that I pasted and then changing the types of the columns themselves now if I right click here you'll see there's no way for you to view native query because there is no query engine behind this source right it's just a text file so there is nowhere for you to pass the workload it's just getting done in Power BI or Power Query itself. So if we go back to the order details, which is where the bulk of our steps are, uh, obviously you'll see that as we, uh, we right clicked on the expanded orders and we viewed the native query here, um, you can do that on every single step. And progressively this native query goes bigger and bigger um, as you do more steps. Um, and the goal of query folding or rather the optimization of query folding is to make sure you do or you have as many steps as you can that is query folded so if you have any steps and transformations that can be done or query folded passed into the source the better so if I keep going from expanded orders I keep right clicking so you see merge queries also have a native query there but then when you get to expanded um, customers you'll see now uh, there's no more native query there and anything else beyond this step won't be uh, query folded anymore uh, but why why is that now think of what's happening in this step right so what we're doing is we are merging the uh, order details table which is coming from the SQL source to the customer's table, which is not coming from a SQL source. What that means is that you can't pass that, um, that command back to the source because it doesn't know what customer's tables are. We don't know where, where it is. Um, so in that sense, you can only do it um, in Power Query if you want to do steps like this. But now what the problem with that is, any other steps that may qualify for query folding after these steps aren't query folded anymore. So what do I mean by that? So let's have a look at some of these steps, right? So you see removed other columns here. So now uh, all it's doing is it's removing some columns here that we don't want. So product ID, quantity and discount. Now all of these columns belong to the order details table. So you can just query fold this but because it's after we have merged it with the customers it doesn't qualify for query folding anymore so we actually want to move this up the chain so that it's passed to the source and query folded as opposed to being done in Power Query because it doesn't need to be done here. So same thing with the group rows here. So if I click the cog icon here this is just uh, doing the count of orders and the orders amount. Now you can do this, you can query fold this, so you can do the counting of orders and the total orders amount. Um, it can send this workload to the source so that it can do the aggregations and you can just receive that result and then you can merge the customers last so that way you have as many steps query folded as possible so let's go through optimizing this query together so let's go to the query and let's duplicate it um, we want to duplicate it just so that we can compare it from before we'll name this one orders query folded so just to remind ourselves we have a couple of steps that we're doing so we're removing some columns that we didn't want and then we're expanding the customer id so that we can use it we merge it with the customers we remove the columns that we don't want and then we group the count of orders and the orders amount we aggregate count and total so now let's go through it together so let's try to remove I'm gonna right click from the merged queries here delete until the end so we want to see how we can start optimizing this together so now we have just the steps that are query folded and you can see at the very end you still everything all the steps here are query folded now we want to replicate the same uh, steps that we did but not exactly uh, in different orders just so that we can have all the steps or at least as much as we can uh, query folded so just have a look at the order details here so you can see here we have three different groupings order id contact name customer id and then we have two aggregations that we do so we count the number of orders and we uh, sum up the total orders amount so we want to have the same output here so let's do a group by here and we got ones now we can do order id and 
customer ID, but we're missing the customer name. Uh, but it's okay because we will sort it out with the merge later. Now we will do uh, total orders. So this is the aggregation, which is just the count of rows. And then we will do uh, total price which is the sum of the unit price actually it's called unit price here so now we've grouped those columns together and what you'll notice if i right click here view native query it's now a native query so the act of grouping and aggregating these columns is actually not done in power bi but actually in the sql source right so if you go back here in the order details before um, even though it qualifies as a, uh, uh, as a query folded step it's not available you, you, it's actually being done um, in power query in your report which you know doesn't have to be one great thing is that uh, also because now we have it query folded, we didn't have to do any remove other columns because it's already um, removed when we did the group rows. So that's another step that we were able to avoid by doing the group rows. So now that we have this, the only thing that we're missing in the columns is the customer name, right? So from here, uh, we can't avoid it anymore and it's the last part of our uh, query. So all we need to do is we'll need to hit merge queries merge it with the customers and then we'll merge it by the customer ids now we'll expand get the customer name contact name i think and then that's it so now you have a query that is doing query folding or optimizing the steps to have as many query folded steps as possible. So the only steps that aren't query folded are the very end, so which is this last bit. But everything else, as you'll see, is query folded, which is much better than what we had before. And that's really it for this video. I hope I've helped you understand how easy it is to start uh, utilizing query folding in order to optimize and improve your query performances in your Power BI reports. I've set up a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access to these videos, access to all the demo files that we have so far, and credits to these videos. So here are the Patreons for this month. If you want to be part of this list, uh, go and support us. Get in touch using the social media links that I included in the description box below. And thank you so much for watching, guys. See you again on the next one.